NASCAR is beginning to work on the 2022 schedules. North Wilkesboro and National Fairgrounds might be making their return to NASCAR, and the SRX format has officially been unrevealed. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. we got a lot of NASCAR stories to discuss here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight to it. We're going to start off all the Pansky news and all the sponsor news from the last 24 hours. First one we're going to take a look at is Austin Way sells 2021 throwback scheme to Tony Reigns when he drove in the truck series at the beginning. It's a throwback to his Pennzoil car. Very solid throwback in my honest opinion. The colors match perfectly, and it's a great throwback and a tradition to Tony Reigns. The next throwback paint scheme we're going to take a look at is Dawson Cram's throwback. This is a throwback to Camper World, as Camper World is sponsoring Dawson Cram once again this weekend. Like Daniel Suarez's throwback scheme, I think the Camper World throwbacks have looked really, really good. This kind of is similar to the Daniel Suarez's best Suarez throwback that we saw that he's going to be running later this weekend. But this is a really good throwback also, by the way. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this throwback out on the racetrack at Darlington here tonight. The next throwback paint scheme we're going to take a look at is Brandon Jones' throwback to Tabo Down that we are going to see tomorrow afternoon in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. They got the color scheme right perfectly. They also did a pretty solid job on the number font. It's a solid throwback for sure. And they did a good job on this overall, in my honest opinion. The final throwback paint scheme we are going to be taking a look at is Cody Ware's throwback paint scheme to Daryl Waltrip, which will be running this Sunday afternoon. Good throwback, in my opinion. Uh, they did a great job on the number scheme. They also changed the number up for that as well. If you're throwing back to, I think, his 1990s colors, if I'm not mistaken. They did a good job on his throwback, for sure. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this throwback out on the racetrack at Darlington International Speedway. And now we're going to jump on to all the other major stories we can discuss here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight to it. The first story we're going to talk about is Market Rebellion, as Market Rebellion is going to be sponsoring Tommy Joe Martins for three races once again in 2021. They sponsored Tommy Joe Martins for quite a few races last year in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and they'll be sponsoring him at Indianapolis, Las Vegas, and Texas Motor Speedway. It's great to see the sponsor working with a guy like Tommy Joe Martins, who's an underdog in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I've been a huge fan of Tommy Joe Martins. We've seen him get a lot of sponsors over this year. We've had Diamond Goose set up to the plate this year and sponsor him, among other sponsors that have been willing to work with Tommy Joe Martins. And this is another company that's coming back this year to sponsor him. Great to see that Mark Rebellion is coming in and sponsoring him. And I'm definitely looking forward to that for sure. The Mark Rebellion is going to be stepping up to the plate and sponsoring Tommy Joe Martins. Now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Mason Mingus. As Mason Mingus is going to be making his RKE East debut at National Fairgrounds in substitution for Richard Garvey. As this weekend, like I mentioned, they're racing at the National Fairgrounds. He's taking a place of Richard Garvey. Mason Mingus, for those who don't know, is a guy that raced in the main ARCA series. I think he may have won a race in ARCA, if I'm not mistaken. And he's most notably known for basically missing Pit Road and going over the double jump at Chicago in 2015 and getting airborne and destroying the splitter. It's been a few years since Mason Mingus has raced in NASCAR. I think the last time he raced in NASCAR in general was back in 2017 in the ARCA series, since it technically is owned by NASCAR. We kind of consider the ARCA banner under the NASCAR banner. But it is really awesome to Mason Mingus is going to be making his return to the to basically the ARC East Series and making his return to NASCAR as well. It's been quite a few years since he's raced. It's definitely really awesome to see that, and I cannot wait to look forward to see him coming back and making his return to NASCAR. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Jordan Anderson. As Jordan Anderson is Xfinity Series team is going to be attempting to qualify for races at Surrey Americas, Charlotte, and Nashville Super Speedway. Those races are going to have practice and qualifying. Now, the story behind Jordan Anderson is that Jordan Anderson's organization has not been able to race pretty much all year because of the fact that they were not able to qualify for Daytona for the Xfinity Series due to that race, unfortunately, being rained out. He has not been able to run his Xfinity Series program due to the owner's point situation. Now, Jordan Anderson's team is going to have pretty decent speed since they're going to believe they have association with RCR, so they're going to have pretty decent speed overall. They have solid speed on the Super Speedway package when we ran the Xfinity Series. But the thing is that they're going to need about 80 or 90 points to be able to make sure they get in for those races. Now, I think that in these races, if rain does not come in, I think that Jordan Anderson is going to be able to qualify him. But the question is, can he get those 80 or 90 points to be in the top 40 points to make sure he makes all races? We're going to have to wait and see, but it's really awesome that Jordan Anderson is going to be attempting. I really hope he makes it in. I like Jordan Anderson a lot. He's been one of my favorite underdogs to watch in NASCAR overall. So I hope he does get that opportunity to try to qualify in these races and hope he's able to make it into those races for sure. I'm, I definitely want him to make it in because he's a guy that deserves it. He's been working his ass off for a very, very long time. And I hope he does get that opportunity going forward here very, very soon. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the next-gen car. As Jim Utter reported yesterday morning, 
that according to him, teams no longer will be able to add or remove tape from the front grill. This is really interesting to me. Basically, starting with since the beginning of NASCAR, teams have been able to add tape and or remove it from the grill. I think the reason that this is the case is because of those heat vents. And because of what those heat vents are supposed to do on top of the car's those nostrils, it's supposed to cool the radiator and it's supposed to cool the engine as well. So I think that's one of the reasons why they're removing that. I find it interesting you know, that they're basically removing that. I really didn't think that they were ever going to remove that, to be honest with you, with the next car. And it's also going to save teams money overall. It's one of the things that they're doing to basically change it and basically save money for teams overall going forward. So it'll be interesting that they're removing that, but we'll see what effect it has on it. And we'll see if we see more engine failures going forward, even though we're going to have those nostrils that are going to cool the engine. I definitely found that very interesting that they're doing that going forward. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode. As we're talking about I Am Athlete, as it was reported yesterday that Brandon Marshall and his company and his group are going to be collaborating with NASCAR, and they're going to be doing this starting on May 10th, called a series called I Am NASCAR, which Dale will debut on May 10th with Dale Earnhardt Jr. For those who don't know, I Am Athlete is a big, big podcast that has individuals like Dale, basically Chad, um, Chad Johnson, I think is the guy's name, uh, Brandon Marshall, among other football players that played in the NFL. This is a massive, massive, massive deal. The fact that I Am Athlete is going to basically be working, it's really, really cool to see him. I Am Athlete is going to be stepping up the plate and work with people like Dale Jr. Of course, they're choosing Dale Jr. since he's the most known person in NASCAR currently to this day. I think it's definitely really interesting they are basically collaborating with I Am Athlete because it's going to basically open up doors and open up eyes, and I think it's really awesome to see that I Am Athlete is going to be collaborating with NASCAR and going to be collaborating with Dale Jr. I want, uh, wonder what other guests they're going to bring. I think they're doing three or four episodes on this. First one, like I mentioned, is going to be Dale Jr., and they're going to have others, among others, basically going to be able to rest. This is debuting on Monday, May 10th, by the way. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode. As we're talking about Jeremy Bullens, as a coroner report from Bob Pockers yesterday, Jeremy Bullens is going to be out for Darlington as a crew chief, as a precaution as part of team protocols. It looks like Jeremy Bullens may have, maybe has got exposed to COVID-19 recently. And it looks like he's not going to be in Darlington International Speedway. And precautionist, Rand Hutchins, who was a crew chief for Ryslowski and who's the engineer for him, who will be the crew chief this weekend for him this, here at Darlington International Speedway. Wishing the best for Jeremy Bones. Hopefully he gets back really, really soon. Hopefully he does come back here in a week. I would expect that he'll be returning when we do go to Circuit Americas a week from now. Hopefully Grant Hutchins can help brag his because he actually did run for a crew chief for Brad Kozlowski at, um, I think it was Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken, basically crew chief for him because he because Jerry Bowles was suspended for weight due to lug nut issue. I think he had two lug nuts gone, and he basically took over from him. Hopefully, Grant Hutchins can help Brad Kozlowski have a really good run, and wishing the best luck for Jerry Bowles because hopefully he can return to the track really, really soon. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode. As we're talking about North Wilkesboro, as in a report yesterday, by Adam Stern, he reports that North Wilsmore, North Carolina Chamber of Commerce is spending $5,000 on billboard banners calling for Speedway Motorsports to reopen North Wilkesboro. We have basically been following the story for quite some time. There has been talk behind the scenes that they're, North, they are looking at maybe working and trying to work with North Wilkesboro to eventually bring that back. Then there was a response that came out yesterday from Marcus Mota saying that he is willing to spend one million dollars to help repay the track and repair the track and build a camping roll facility in the city of Wilkesboro, North Carolina. It's been something that's been kind of going on behind it for a while. You've been following the story on Twitter. This is something that's been going on for quite some time. But the fact that this is currently being worked on and things are happening as quick as they are is really, really awesome. The last member, the last time we raced in North Wilkesboro was back in 1986, and we've talked about it here on the channel, that they would like to bring national, not national Air Rides, North Wilkesboro back to NASCAR for really certain reasons, a nostalgia factor. One of the big reasons, though, that it really hasn't worked out, they've tried to do it for a long time. The really, really big reason is they've had flooding issues. That track is in need in so much repair right now. There's a lot of things that definitely need to be done with North Wilkesboro, but the fact that they are currently working on trying to bring North Wilkesboro back is really, really awesome. I really do hope it happens because it'd be really good for the sport if a track like North Wilkes or come back, a track that hasn't been around for quite some time. I know there's been people suggesting they maybe make that the dirt track, but honestly, I don't know if they're going to do that. I know a lot of people are like, they, they should just make it a dirt track. That definitely could be the place where they put the dirt track instead of going to Bristol. But again, if that has happened, though, Bristol might lose one of her dates. But it's also in the movement to bring short tracks back because a lot of people have been dealt with all pushing for short tracks to come back in the sport. With the talk of Auto Club going to a half-mile racetrack, I'm on other tracks like a track that we're going to talk about here really soon that, that is in the conversation of potential coming back. 
That's really, really awesome. And I'm hoping North Wolfsburg can make its return really, really soon. Because that definitely would be some very awesome news going forward, by the way. Speaking of which, we're going to go ahead and talk about the Nashville Fairgrounds. As also reported just a few minutes ago by Adam Stern, he says that Dylan Art Jr. is at the Nashville Fairgrounds ahead of the ARCA race this weekend, helping promote Speedway Motorsports' efforts to bring NASCAR back to the venue. If you've been following the story of the Nashville Fairgrounds, there has been talk going on behind the scenes and talk at the cities. Basically, they have been trying to push for Nashville Fairgrounds to come back, but one of the big concerns right now is the fact of the noise concerns. Because a lot of the people that I've been playing, I think they're you have to listen to them, even though I think some of their comparisons and their complaining is stupid, to be perfectly honest with you. We have to listen to the people. Again, if you move to a racetrack, you should know and do your research, because National Fairgrounds has been around since 1906. Maybe do your research before you go ahead and move to a city where there's a racetrack. Oh, people are like, I didn't know there was a racetrack here. I thought they were shutting it down. Nope. The trace track is thriving right now, and there's things that are being done. It's no secret. There has been pushed a couple, I think it was about a month or two ago, there basically was an open letter of commencement to try to get the track open, to try to bring the race track back. You had Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Marcus Smith who were at the track. And when Dale Earnhardt Jr. is getting involved in something like this, you need to pay attention because when Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on board of something, usually things begin to happen. Now, that being said, it's probably going to be a long time before National Fairgrounds come back if it is to be approved. Again, I would not expect racing as early as, probably the earliest, to be perfectly honest with you, that racing would come back for the National Fairgrounds. The earliest it would come back is probably in 2022, probably, actually not 2022, probably the earliest it would come back is 2024 or 2025, honestly, because there's a lot of renovations that do have to be done with the National Fairgrounds. Number one, they don't have safer barriers at the National Fairgrounds, so they have to get that. They have to update the scoreboard there. The, say, the Basically, the seats of the track, they're kind of falling apart, to be honest with you, and they would have to update the seating. They have to update a lot of things and amenities to make sure the safety is correct for NASCAR standards. And they're also looking to remove the noise immigration as well. And a lot of people complaining about, oh, like, there'd be all this testing still going on. There really wouldn't be as much with this. It would be removing some of those testing days overall. So that's things they have to do with it. But I really, to be honest with you, am hoping and praying that they do bring National Fairgrounds back. Because, again, I think that National Fairgrounds has a much better chance than North Wilkesboro to come back. Right now, there's been more of a push for the National Fairgrounds than North Wilkesboro to come back. I mean, this is one of the tracks I think a lot of people want to come back. Because the last time we raced at the National Fairgrounds was back in 2000. I really hope it happens, to be perfectly honest with you, because I want to see the National Fairgrounds do come back to the, <laughs> the NASCAR Cup Series schedule and make its return overall. But definitely some really exciting news overall going forward and definitely look forward to see what happens. I hope it does happen and it does not get shut down because a lot of people on that board really want to happen. There's one or two people on that board I know that have been complaining about wanting to come back, but overall in general is a man almost a consensus for most people that would like to bring it back. And even the mayor's been involved. So hopefully we get to see the National Fairgrounds come back here really, really soon. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to go ahead and talk about the SRX format that was announced yesterday. So here's how the race format is going to work for the SRX. So he won for each of these races is going to be 15 minutes and that is going to be set by a random draw. He number two is going to be 15 minutes as well and it's going to be inverted from the field. The finish order, I think first will start last and last will start first race and that will be inverted for he number two. Each of these races, like I mentioned, are going to be timed for 15 minutes each. Instead of having a set number of laps, they will be 15 minutes, similar to like what they do in like IMSA and stuff, where they have a time. When they get to the last lap and there's not enough time to complete an extra lap, the white flag will be waved, and whoever crossed the finish line first will win, and then he too, like I said, that field will be inverted. Features are going to be 100 laps long, except at the Slinger International Speedway, which is going to be 150 laps. Every other race of tracks like Eldora are going to be 100 laps each. There will be limited attempts at a green-white checker. So if they don't make it to the white flag, they will go back and do it again. Similar to what NASCAR does right now with the unlimited attempts to the green-white checker that they do in NASCAR, they will have that. The race format is definitely interesting. I thought they would keep it simple, to be honest with you, but the fact that there's a lot of complication, there's going to be math involved, I'm not a big fan of it. I do actually like inverted fields. I think that a lot of tour trucks tend to do that, but it's a little more complicated than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. They're also doing a championship point system as well. That I think they're doing it like five or ten months. I think it's going to be one point each similar to NASCAR, if I'm not mistaken. They're doing a season-long six races. Definitely looking forward to the SRX and definitely trying to see what is going to happen with that. The SRX format... It's definitely interesting to say the least. I'm definitely looking forward to see what happens in the SRX. And now we're going to jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're going to go ahead and talk about street courses. As in a report yesterday, 
by Adam Stern, he reports that Mexico City and Denver are among the possible locations for future NASCAR street races, on top of the current primary target in Chicago. When I heard a report that Denver and Mexico City were in a question and potential in conversation of potentially maybe going there if it doesn't work out in Chicago, being the two next cities that might get it. I was really shocked, to be honest with you. Now, I know a lot of people have been complaining about Mexico City. I wouldn't make that as my primary target. Denver, though, is very interesting because there really is not a lot of racing that happens in the Denver area. I know there's a lot, actually, there's a lot of racing fans in the Denver area. And the last time the NASCAR even raced in the Denver area was back in 2005 at Pikes Peak International Speedway, where David Green ended up winning, I believe, on fuel mileage, if I'm not mistaken. So that was a long time ago. But Denver is a city that overall has been growing for quite some time. And I definitely think that Denver should be an area that NASCAR does look at because NASCAR really doesn't have any racing in that Northeast area, kind of where Denver is in that Colorado Rocky Mountain area. There's not a lot of racing out there. I think the closest track they have, it would be like Kansas or like maybe like Texas. That'd be the closest tracks to the Colorado area. Another thing that's really important with this is that bringing the races to the city is super, super important for street racing and stuff because you bring the product to fans because fans have to take their time and it sometimes takes hours for fans to go to those areas. And they spend a lot of money and have to commence a couple days of their lives, basically, to go out to events. If you bring it to the city, yes, they still, of course, take some time out of their lives to go out to these events. Not just the casual fans, but the hardcore fans as well. But they save a lot of money. And bringing a product to fans is something important. NASCAR has fans have been asking NASCAR to bring the product to the city. And this is something I'm definitely really, really excited for if this is happening. Because street course racing in NASCAR will definitely change the game for the sport going forward. The fact that though Denver and even Mexico City are in the question, because like I mentioned, Mexico City also, there has not been racing in NASCAR since 2008. The fact that those are two cities that are in the potential to get races is really, really cool. I'm definitely looking forward to see this going forward because, again, bringing the product to the city is really important. Of course, the racing has to be really, really good. And street course sometimes can be hit or miss. Bringing product city will not only attract the hardcore fans that are fans for, but it will also attract those casual fans as well. That if they see the racing, they're like, hey, you know what? I may enjoy this racing. I might definitely come and check it out. So we'll have to see what happens going forward with this. But yeah, definitely really exciting news for sure. I'm definitely going to see what happens going forward. And maybe we'll see this on the 2022 schedule. Speaking of which, and we jump into the final story as well. We are talking about the 2022 schedule. According to Adam Stern, NASCAR has started putting together preliminary dress of the 2022 schedule. This is what Ben Kennedy said. It also stated that he wants to add and eventually expand its schedule presence to the Pacific Northwest and broader North America. He's talking about maybe going up to like Canada and stuff and Mexico, like talking about that street course just sent a second ago, maybe expanding over down to the Mexico area, but in the Pacific Northwest as well. There is not a lot of racing. I mean, if you go past like the Kansas and Texas areas and all that stuff, in that Pacific Northwest region, there is a lot of racing that goes up in states like Montana and North Dakota and South Dakota and even the Washington area as well, even Oregon area as well. There's one track in particular that is up in that Pacific Northwest that really a lot of people are not talking about that I think would be open for racing. And that track is Portland Raceway. Portland Racing hosts IndyCar races, and it actually hosted um, NASCAR races in the truck series, I think from the beginning of like 1995, 1996, I think up to 2000 or 2001. I think it's been quite some since the truck series race. But IndyCar made its return, I think, in 2018 or 2019. We saw a very, very solid race where Takuma Sato won. There are a lot of fans that went to that event. I think believe that event sold out or almost sold out, if I'm not mistaken, because they made their return. And NASCAR like I mentioned, has not raced in the Portland area since 2001. I know a lot of people like to see racing in the Portland area. It's the most notable track up in that Pacific Northwest area. You also have the Seattle area where they can go up to if the street race does open up there. You go up to that Seattle area as well. I definitely think NASCAR should look into going to the Portland area if they're going to go up to the Pacific Northwest. But this is really, really exciting they're looking at that. The next thing is up in the north and the south. I think another track that a lot of people really, really would like to come back if they are to go up the Canada area. Yes, you have Canadian Tire up in the Canada but you also have the streets of Toronto, which Toronto is a big city in there, and we've seen IndyCar racing there as well. The other track is Montreal. 
Remember how good the racing was in Montreal from the beginning to the end? There was not a single bad race that took place, in my opinion, in the Montreal area from 2007 to 2012. We ran there, and then we moved over to Mid Ohio, which was this was bought after Marzal 2006. The racing was really, really bad there. They brought Montreal in, and there was controversy in these events, but also really, really exciting racing. And I know a lot of people that have wanting wanting this track to come back. In my opinion, I like to see Montreal come back. I think the racing Xfinity series was really, really solid, and with the next gen car coming in. And with these cars basically looking and being similar to Penny's cars, I definitely would like to see NASCAR eventually have that opportunity of going back to the Montreal area. I think those two tracks that I mentioned, if they are to go up in that area and expand into those areas, I definitely think that they will go up into those areas. As for the 2022 schedule in general, I think that announcement for that is not going to come to the closer to when we had last year since the fact that it just was announced because, again, they had the next gen car. I think now they're working on it since the next gen car is officially been revealed. NASCAR is working on the schedule for next year. We know the Daytona 500 is going to be on February 20th of 2022. Since President's Day is going to be around that weekend. And with the Super Bowl basically pushing NAS the season back a week. With Super Bowl being pushed to February 13th. They expanded the NFL season to 17 games. NASCAR season will be pushed back to February 20th. I would expect speed weeks to be the same. And I'm wondering what other tracks NASCAR is going to be looking at for that 2022 schedule. Are they looking at tracks maybe like Gateway to bring? St. Louis is a pretty popular area as well. And we've seen the Truck Series racer. I mean, it's been hit or miss with the Truck Series and IndyCar. But I don't think Gateway, with how many fans are in the St. Louis area, I definitely think NASCAR should look at that area. You also have tracks down in the south like New Orleans that could be available up for conversation. Like in Mexico, like I mentioned with the Mexico Series going on in the Mexico area. That's something we're going to have to watch going forward with the schedule. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward and excited to see what they announce. I think we're going to see even a crazier schedule in 2022 that we saw in 2020. Remember how much we changed in 2020 schedule, all the road courses we had this year, and even a dirt track this year. We also know the Bristol Sports coming back next year. I think that the schedule is even going to be crazier. And with the potential of a street course coming here in 2022, I think that we are going to see a crazier schedule going forward in the 2022 season. So, Anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications to be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support my page as well. Links description below for that, and comment your thoughts on today's video. What are your thoughts about potential new areas like Denver and Mexico City or Chicago getting a street course? Which city do you think will be the most likely to get a street course race for NASCAR? Let me know in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about NASCAR starting to work on the 2022 schedule? And what tracks would you like to see them add for the 2022 schedule? Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great and awesome NASCAR content. Tonight, we got the Truck Series. I'm definitely looking forward to see that later this evening. We will talk about the Truck Series at the conclusion this evening.